The use of the name, Macedonia, is disputed between the southeastern European countries of Greece and the Republic of Macedonia, formerly a state within Yugoslavia. Pertinent to its background is an early 20th century multifaceted dispute and armed conflict that formed part of the background to the Balkan Wars. The specific naming dispute, although an existing issue in Yugoslav Greek relations since World War II, was reignited after the breakup of Yugoslavia and the newly gained independence of the former Socialist Republic of Macedonia in 1991. Since then, it has been an ongoing issue in bilateral and international relations. The dispute arises from the ambiguity in nomenclature between the Republic of Macedonia, the adjacent Greek region of Macedonia and the ancient Greek Kingdom of Macedon which falls mostly within Greek Macedonia. Citing historical and irredentist concerns, Greece opposes the use of the name Macedonia by the Republic of Macedonia without a geographical qualifier such as Northern Macedonia for use by all and for all purposes. As millions of ethnic Greeks identify themselves as Macedonians, unrelated to the Slavic people who are associated with the Republic of Macedonia, Greece further objects to the use of the term Macedonian for the neighboring country's largest ethnic group and its language. The Republic of Macedonia is accused of appropriating symbols and figures that are historically considered part of Greek culture such as the Virginia Sun and Alexander the Great, and of promoting the irredentist concept of a united Macedonia, which involves territorial claims on Greece, Bulgaria, Albania and Serbia. The dispute has escalated to the highest level of international mediation, involving numerous attempts to achieve a resolution. In 1995, the two countries formalized bilateral relations and committed to start negotiations on the naming issue, under the auspices of the United Nations. Until a solution is found, the provisional reference, the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia, sometimes unofficially abbreviated as FIRM, is used by international organizations and states which do not recognize translations of the constitutional name Republic of Macedonia, Republica Macedonia, Republica Macedonia. UN members, and the UN as a whole, have agreed to accept any final agreement on a new name resulting from negotiations between the two countries. The parties are represented by Ambassadors Vasco Namovsky and Adamantios Vasilakis, under the mediation of Matthew Nimitz. Nimitz has worked on the issue since 1994. On 12 June 2018 an agreement was reached between Greek Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras and his Macedonian counterpart Zoran Zave, where the Republic of Macedonia could be renamed the Republic of North Macedonia. A referendum was held in the Republic of Macedonia on 30 September 2018, with voters overwhelmingly affirming support for EU and NATO membership by accepting the agreement, albeit with 37% voter turnout. Background Controversy and conflict In antiquity, the territory of present-day Republic of Macedonia equated approximately to the Kingdom of Paeonia, which lay immediately north of ancient Macedonia. The modern Greek region of Macedonia approximately corresponds to that of ancient Macedonia. After the Romans conquered Greece in 168 BC, they established a large administrative district in northern Greece, which added Paeonia to other territories outside the original ancient Macedonia, and used the name Macedonia to describe the whole of this new province. This province was divided in the 4th century CE into Macedonia Prima, First Macedonia, in the south, encompassing most of the ancient Macedonia, coinciding with most of the modern Greek region of Macedonia, and Macedonia Salutaris, Wholesome Macedonia, also called Macedonia Secunda, Second Macedonia, in the north, encompassing partially Dardania and the whole of Paeonia. Thus Macedonia Salutaris encompassed most of the present-day Republic of Macedonia. This situation lasted, with some modifications, until the Ottoman Empire absorbed the remnants of the Eastern Roman Empire in the 15th century. Ottoman Macedonia then became part of Rumelia, controlled by the Ottoman Empire up to 1913. In 1893 a revolutionary movement against Ottoman rule began, resulting in the Alinden Uprising on 2 August 1903 Street. Elias's day. The failure of the Alinden uprising caused a change in the strategy of the Internal Macedonian Revolutionary Organization from revolutionary to institutional. 
It split into two wings, one led by Jane Sandansky and fighting for autonomous Macedonia inside the Ottoman Empire or inside a Balkan federation, and a second supremist wing supporting the inclusion of Macedonia in Bulgaria. After the Alinden uprising, the revolutionary movement ceased and opened a space for the Macedonian struggle. Frequent insurgencies of Bulgarian, Greek, and Serbian squads into Ottoman Europe, including the ill defined territory of the wider Macedonian region. In 1912, rivalries resulted in the First Balkan War of 1912 1913, and the Ottomans lost most of their European lands. In 1913, the Second Balkan War began in the aftermath of the division of the Balkans among five entities to have secured control over these territories, Greece, Serbia, Bulgaria, Romania and Montenegro all hitherto recognized. Albania, in conflict with Serbia, Montenegro and Greece, declared its independence in 1912, striving for recognition. The Treaty of London 1913 assigned the region of the future Republic of Macedonia to Serbia. The outbreak of the First World War allowed Bulgaria to occupy Eastern Macedonia and Vardar Macedonia, helping Austria-Hungary defeat the Serbs by the end of 1915, and leading to the opening of the Macedonian Front against the Greek part of Macedonia. Bulgaria would maintain control over the area until their capitulation in September 1918, at which point the borders reverted with small adjustments to the situation of 1913, and the present-day Republic of Macedonia became part of the Kingdom of Serbs, Croats and Slovenes. This period saw the rise of ideals of a separate Macedonian state in Greece and the development of nation-building by the League of Communists of Yugoslavia in their Third Congress in Vienna in 1926. The Kingdom of Serbs, Croats and Slovenes changed its name in 1929 to the Kingdom of Yugoslavia and the present-day Republic of Macedonia was included as South Serbia in a province named Vardar Banovina. During World War II, Axis forces occupied much of the Kingdom of Yugoslavia from 1941. Bulgaria as an associate of the Axis powers advanced into the territory of the Republic of Macedonia and the Greek province of Macedonia in 1941. The territory of the Republic of Macedonia was divided between Bulgaria and Italian Albania in June 1941. The Yugoslav People's Liberation War began officially in 1941 in the territory of the Republic of Macedonia. On 2 August 1944 Street. Elias's Day, honoring the fighters of the Alinden Uprising, the Anti-Fascist Assembly for the National Liberation of Macedonia ASNOM, meeting in Serbia, constituted the Macedonian State Democratic Federal Macedonia as a federal state within the framework of the future Yugoslav Federation. In 1946 the People's Republic of Macedonia was established as a federal component of the newly proclaimed Federal People's Republic of Yugoslavia under the leadership of Josip Broz Tito. The issue of the Republic's name immediately sparked controversy with Greece over Greek concerns that it presaged a territorial claim on the Greek coastal region of Macedonia see territorial concerns below. The U.S. Roosevelt administration expressed the same concern through Edward Statinius in 1944. The Greek press and the Greek government of Andreas Papandreou continued to express the above concerns confronting the views of Yugoslavia during the 1980s and until the revolutions of 1989. In 1963 the People's Republic of Macedonia was renamed the Socialist Republic of Macedonia when the Federal People's Republic of Yugoslavia was renamed the Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia. It dropped the Socialist from its name a few months before declaring independence from Yugoslavia in September 1991. Strong Greek opposition delayed the newly independent republic's accession to the United Nations and its recognition by the European Community EC. Although the Arbitration Commission of the Peace Conference on the former Yugoslavia declared that the Republic of Macedonia met the conditions set by the EC for international recognition, Greece opposed the international community recognizing the republic due to a number of objections concerning the country's name, flag and constitution. In an effort to block the European Community from recognizing the Republic, the Greek government persuaded the EC to adopt a common declaration establishing conditions for recognition which included a ban on "...territorial claims towards a neighboring community state, hostile propaganda and the use of a denomination that implies territorial claims." In Greece, about one million Greek Macedonians participated in the "...rally for Macedonia." 
Greek, Solitario Gia Te Macedonia a very large demonstration that took place in the streets of Thessaloniki in 1992. The rally aimed to object to Macedonia, being a part of the name of then newly established Republic of Macedonia. In a following major rally in Australia, held in Melbourne and organised by the Macedonians of the Greek diaspora which has a strong presence there, about 100,000 people protested. The major slogan of these rallies was, "'Macedonia is Greek' Greek, H. Macedonia Eni Elenike, Greece's major political parties agreed on 13 April 1992 not to accept the word, "'Macedonia' in any way in the new republic's name. This became the cornerstone of the Greek position on the issue. The Greek diaspora also mobilized in the naming controversy. A Greek-American group, Americans for the Just Resolution of the Macedonian Issue, placed a full-page advertisement in the 26th of April and the 10th of May 1992 editions of the New York Times, urging President George H. W. Bush not to discount the concerns of the Greek people by recognizing the Republic of Skopje as Macedonia. Greek Canadians mounted a similar campaign. The EC subsequently issued a declaration expressing a willingness to recognize that republic within its existing borders under a name which does not include the term Macedonia. Greek objections likewise held up the wider international recognition of the Republic of Macedonia. Although the Republic applied for membership of the United Nations on 30 July 1992, its application languished in diplomatic limbo for nearly a year. A few states—Bulgaria, Turkey, Slovenia, Croatia, Belarus and Lithuania—recognized the Republic under its constitutional name before its admission to the United Nations. Most, however, waited to see what the United Nations would do. The delay had a serious effect on the Republic, as it led to a worsening of its already precarious economic and political conditions. With war raging in nearby Bosnia and Herzegovina and in Croatia, the need to ensure the country's stability became an urgent priority for the international community. The deteriorating security situation led to the UN's first ever preventative peacekeeping deployment in December 1992, when units of the United Nations Protection Force deployed to monitor possible border violations from Serbia. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Compromise solutions. During 1992, the International Monetary Fund, World Bank and the International Conference on the Former Yugoslavia all adopted the appellation, the Former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia, to refer to the Republic in their discussions and dealings with it. The same terminology was proposed in January 1993 by France, Spain and the United Kingdom, the three EC members of the United Nations Security Council, to enable the Republic to join the United Nations. The proposal was circulated on the 22nd of January 1993 by the United Nations Secretary General. However, it was initially rejected by both sides in the dispute. It was immediately opposed by the Greek Foreign Minister, Michalis Papakonstantino. In a letter to the Secretary General dated 25 January 1993, he argued that admitting the Republic prior to meeting the necessary prerequisites, and in particular abandoning the use of the denomination Republic of Macedonia, would perpetuate and increase friction and tension and would not be conducive to peace and stability in an already troubled region." The President of the Republic of Macedonia, Kiro Gligorov, also opposed the proposed formula. In a letter of 24 March 1993, he informed the President of the United Nations Security Council that the Republic of Macedonia will in no circumstances be prepared to accept the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia as the name of the country. He declared that, We refuse to be associated in any way with the present connotation of the term Yugoslavia. The issue of possible Serbian territorial ambitions had been a long running concern in the Republic of Macedonia, which some Serbian nationalists still called South Serbia after its pre-World War II name. The government in the Republic of Macedonia was consequently nervous of any naming formula which might be seen to endorse a possible Serbian territorial claim. Both sides came under intense diplomatic pressure to compromise. 
The support that Greece had received initially from its allies and partners in NATO and the European Community had begun to wane due to a combination of factors that included irritation in some quarters at Greece's hard line on the issue and a belief that Greece had flouted sanctions against Slobodan Milosevic's Federal Republic of Yugoslavia. The intra-community tensions were publicly exposed on 20 January 1993 by the Danish Foreign Minister, Uf Elleman Jensen, who attracted the ire of Greek members of the European Parliament when he described the Greek position as «ridiculous» and expressed the hope that «the Security Council will very quickly recognise Macedonia and that many of the member states of the community will support this». The Greek Prime Minister, Konstantinos Mitsotakis, took a much more moderate line on the issue than many of his colleagues in the governing New Democracy Party. Despite opposition from hardliners, he endorsed the proposal in March 1993. The acceptance of the formula by Athens also led to the reluctant acquiescence of the government in Skopje, though it too was divided between moderates and hardliners on the issue. On 7 April 1993, the UN Security Council endorsed the admission of the Republic in United Nations Security Council Resolution 817. It recommended to the United Nations General Assembly, "...that the state whose application is contained in Document S. 25147 be admitted to membership in the United Nations, this state being provisionally referred to for all purposes within the United Nations as the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia pending settlement of the difference that has arisen over the name of the state." The recommendation was agreed by the General Assembly, which passed Resolution 225 on the following day, 8 April, using virtually the same language as the Security Council. The Republic of Macedonia thus became the 181st member of the United Nations. The compromise solution, as set out in the two resolutions, was very carefully worded in an effort to meet the objections and concerns of both sides. The wording of the resolutions rested on four key principles. The appellation, former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia, is a provisional term to be used only until the dispute was resolved. The term was a reference, not a name. As a neutral party in the dispute, the United Nations had not sought to determine the name of the state. The President of the Security Council subsequently issued a statement declaring on behalf of the Council that the term merely reflected the historic fact that it had been in the past a republic of the former Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia. The purpose of the term was also emphasized by the fact that the expression begins with the uncapitalized words the former Yugoslav, acting as a descriptive term, rather than the former Yugoslav, which would act as a proper noun. By also being a reference rather than a name, it met Greek concerns that the term Macedonia should not be used in the Republic's internationally recognized name. The use of the term was purely for all purposes within the United Nations. It was not being mandated for any other party. The term did not imply that the Republic of Macedonia had any connection with the existing Federal Republic of Yugoslavia, as opposed to the historical and now defunct Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia. One additional concern that had to be taken care of was the seating of the Republic of Macedonia in the General Assembly. Greece rejected seating the Republic's representative under M as in Macedonia, former Yugoslav Republic of, and the Republic rejected sitting under F as in former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia", which turned the reference into a proper noun rather than a description. Instead, it was seated under T as the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia and placed next to Thailand. In due course, the same convention was adopted by many other international organizations and states but they did so independently, not as the result of being instructed by the UN. For its part, Greece did not adopt the UN terminology at this stage and did not recognize the Republic under any name. The rest of the international community did not immediately recognize the Republic, but this did eventually happen at the end of 1993 and start of 1994. The People's Republic of China was the first major power to act, recognizing the Republic under its constitutional name on 13 October 1993. On 16 December 1993, two weeks before Greece was due to take up the European Union presidency, six key EC countries—Denmark, France, Germany, Italy, the Netherlands and the United Kingdom—recognized the Republic under its UN designation. 
Other EC countries followed suit in quick succession and by the end of December, all EC member states except Greece had recognized the Republic. Japan, Russia and the United States followed suit on 21 December 1993, 3 February 1994, and 9 February 1994 respectively. Topic. Continuing dispute Despite the apparent success of the Compromise Agreement, it led to an upsurge in nationalist agitation in both countries. Anti-Western and anti-American feelings came to the fore in Greece, in response to a perception that Greece's partners in the EC and NATO had betrayed it. The government of Konstantin Mitsotakis was highly vulnerable, it had a majority of only a couple of seats and was under considerable pressure from ultra-nationalists. After the country's admission to the UN, the hardline former foreign minister Antonis Samaras broke away from the governing New Democracy party along with three like-minded deputies who resented what they saw as the prime minister's unacceptable weakness on the Macedonian issue. This defection deprived ND of its slim parliamentary majority and ultimately caused the fall of the government, which suffered a landslide defeat in the general election of October 1993. It was replaced by the Pazak party under Andreas Papandreou, who introduced an even more hardline policy on Macedonia and withdrew from the UN sponsored negotiations on the naming issue in late October. The government of the Republic of Macedonia also faced domestic opposition for its part in the agreement. Protest rallies against the UN's temporary reference were held in the cities of Skopje, Kokani and Rezin. The parliament only accepted the agreement by a narrow margin, with 30 deputies voting in favour, 28 voting against and 13 abstaining. The nationalist VMRO-DPMNE party then in opposition called a vote of no confidence over the naming issue, but the government survived with 62 deputies voting in its favor. The naming dispute has not been confined to the Balkans, as immigrant communities from both countries have actively defended the positions of their respective homelands around the world, organizing large protest rallies in major European, North American and Australian cities. After Australia recognized the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia. In early 1994, tensions between the two communities reached a climax, with churches and properties hit by a series of tit-for-tat bomb and arson attacks in Melbourne. Topic. Greek embargo The relations between the two countries further worsened in February 1994 when Greece imposed a trade embargo on Macedonia which coincided with the UN embargo on Federal Republic of Yugoslavia on its northern border. The combined blockade denied Macedonia access to its closest and most accessible sea port, Thessaloniki, and rendered its main north-south trade route useless. The country was forced to supply itself through the undeveloped east-west route. During the embargo oil was imported to Macedonia via the Bulgarian port of Burgas, which is located over 800 km from Skopje, on tank trunks using a mountain road. It has been estimated that Macedonia suffered damages of around $2 billion due to the trade embargo. Greece received heavy international criticism, the embargo lasted for 18 months, and was lifted after the interim accord between the two countries was signed in October 1995. Topic. Interim Accord Greece and the Republic of Macedonia eventually formalized bilateral relations in an interim accord signed in New York on 13 September 1995. Under the agreement, the Republic removed the Virginia Sun from its flag and allegedly irredentist clauses from its constitution, and both countries committed to continuing negotiations on the naming issue under UN auspices. For its part, Greece agreed that it would not object to any application by the Republic so long as it used only the appellation set out in paragraph 2 of the United Nations Security Council Resolution 817, i.e., former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia. This opened the door for the Republic to join a variety of international organizations and initiatives, including the Council of Europe, the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe (OSCE), and Partnership for Peace. The accord was not a conventional perpetual treaty, as it can be superseded or revoked, but its provisions are legally binding in terms of international law. Most unusually, it did not use the names of either party. Greece, the party of the first part recognized the Republic of Macedonia under the term, the party of the second part. 
The accord did not specifically identify either party by name, thus avoiding the awkwardness of Greece having to use the term Macedonia in reference to its northern neighbor. Instead, it identified the two parties elliptically by describing the party of the first part as having Athens as its capital and the party of the second part having its capital at Skopje. Subsequent declarations have continued this practice of referring to the parties without naming them. Cyrus Vance was the witness of interim accord as special envoy of the Secretary General of the United Nations. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Stalemate. The naming issue was effectively at a stalemate until the 2018 agreement. Various names had been proposed over the years, for instance, New Macedonia. Upper Macedonia, Slavo Macedonia, Nova Macedonia, Macedonia, Skopje, and so on. However, these had invariably fallen foul of the initial Greek position that no permanent formula incorporating the term Macedonia is acceptable. Athens had counter-proposed the names Vardar Republic or Republic of Skopje. But the government and opposition parties in Skopje had consistently rejected any solution that eliminates the term Macedonia from the country's name. Following these developments, Greece has gradually revised its position and demonstrates its acceptance of a composite appellation, with a geographical qualifier, erga omnes, i.e., the incorporation of the term Macedonia in the name, but with the use of a disambiguating name specification, for international and intergovernmental use. However, a compromise has not been achieved. The inhabitants of the Republic of Macedonia are overwhelmingly opposed to changing the country's name. A June 2007 opinion poll found that 77% of the population were against a change in the country's constitutional name, and 72% supported the Republic's accession to NATO only if it was admitted under its constitutional name. Only 8% supported accession under the reference the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia. A number of states recognized the Republic of Macedonia by its constitutional name. A few had recognized it by this name from the start, while most others had switched from recognizing it under its UN reference. By September 2007, 118 countries 61% of all UN member states had recognized the Republic of Macedonia under its constitutional name. Some observers had suggested that the gradual revision of the Greek position means that the question appears destined to die in due course. On the other hand, attempts by the Republic to persuade international organizations to drop the provisional reference have met with limited success. A recent example was the rejection by the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe of a draft proposal to replace the provisional reference with the constitutional name in Council of Europe documents. The compromise reference is always used in relations when states not recognizing the constitutional name are present. This is because the UN refers to the country only as the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia. Moscow's ambassador to Athens, Andrei V. Dovin, stated that Russia will support whichever solution stems from the UN compromise talks, while hinting that, it is some other countries that seem to have a problem in doing so. Most Greeks reject the use of the word, Macedonia, to describe the Republic of Macedonia, instead calling it, PGDM, Proen Jankoslavike Demokratia Tes Macedonias, the Greek translation of, Theorem, or Skopje, after the country's capital. The latter metonymic name is not used by non-Greeks, and many inhabitants of the Republic regard it as insulting. Greeks also call the country's inhabitants Skopians Greek. Skopian. Greek official sources sometimes also use the term Slavomacedonian. The U.S. State Department has used the term side by side with Macedonian, albeit having them both in quotation marks. The name Macedonian Slavs. Makedonski Slovenia is another term used to refer to the ethnic Macedonians. A number of news agencies have used it, although the BBC recently discontinued its use on the grounds that people had alleged it was offensive, and it is used by the Encarta Encyclopedia. The name has been occasionally used in early ethnic Macedonian literary sources as in Krste Misirkov's work on Macedonian matters in 1903. Although the two countries continue to argue over the name, in practice they deal pragmatically with each other. Economic relations and cooperation have resumed to such an extent that Greece is now considered one of the republic's most important foreign economic partners and investors. 
Topic 2005-2006 proposals in the double name formula. In 2005, Matthew Nimitz, UN Special Representative, suggested using Republica Macedonia Skopje for official purposes. Greece did not accept the proposal outright, but characterized it as a basis for constructive negotiations. Prime Minister Vlado Bukovsky rejected the proposal and counterproposed a double name formula, where the international community uses Republic of Macedonia and Greece uses former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia. Nimitz was reported to have made a new proposal in October 2005, that the name Republica Macedonia should be used by those countries that have recognized the country under that name and that Greece should use the formula Republica Macedonia, Skopje, while the international institutions and organizations should use the name Republica Macedonia in Latin alphabet transcription. Although the government of the Republic of Macedonia accepted the proposal as a good basis for solving the dispute, Greece rejected the proposal as unacceptable. In December 2006, the newly elected nationalist VMRO DPM and E led government of the Republic announced the intent to rename Skopje Airport Petrovic to Alexander Veliki, Alexander the Great. Matthew Nimitz was invited to Athens in January 2007, where he commented that the efforts to mediate in the issue over the name were "...affected and not in a positive way". <laughs> NATO and EU accession talks The Republic of Macedonia's aspirations to join the European Union and NATO under its constitutional name have caused controversy in recent years. Under the Interim Accord of September 1995, Greece agreed not to obstruct the Republic's applications for membership in international bodies as long as it did so under its provisional UN appellation. Leading Greek officials had repeatedly stated that Athens would veto the country's accession in the absence of a resolution to the dispute. The Greek Foreign Minister, Dora Bakayanis, stated that the Hellenic Parliament, under any composition, will not ratify the accession of the neighboring country to the EU and NATO if the name issue is not resolved beforehand." The Greek Prime Minister Kostas Karamanlis had initially denied ever committing himself unequivocally to exercising Greece's right of veto, stating instead that he would only block the neighboring country's application for EU and NATO membership if it sought to be admitted as the Republic of Macedonia. But on 19 October 2007, he stated that without a mutually acceptable solution to the name issue, the country could not join either NATO or the EU. Negotiations between Athens and Skopje were resumed on 1 November 2007, continued on 1 December of the same year, and a bilateral meeting was held in January 2008. On 19 February 2008 in Athens, the delegations of the two countries met under the auspices of the UN mediator, Matthew Nimitz. They were presented with a new framework, which they both accepted as a basis for further negotiations. The new framework was intended to be secret so that negotiations could take place, but was leaked early in the press. The full text in Greek was published initially by Tavima and circulated speedily in all major media. It contained eight points, and the general idea was a composite name solution for all international purposes. It also contained five proposed names. Constitutional Republic of Macedonia Democratic Republic of Macedonia Independent Republic of Macedonia New Republic of Macedonia Republic of Upper Macedonia on 27 February 2008, a rally was held in Skopje called by several organizations in support of the name, Republic of Macedonia. Greek Nationalist Party Popular Orthodox Rally also organized a similar rally in Thessaloniki on 5 March, in support of the name, Macedonia, being used only by Greece. The Greek Church and both major Greek parties strongly discouraged such protests. During this sensitive time of negotiation, on 2 March 2008, in New York, Matthew Nimitz announced that the talks had failed, that there was a «gap» in the positions of the two countries, and that there would not be any progress, unless there were some sort of compromise, which he characterized as «valuable» for both sides. After Greek PM Karamanlis's warnings that «no solution equals no invitation», 
The Greek media took it for granted that Greece would veto the coming NATO accession talks for the country. In the Foreign Ministers' Summit on 6 March 2008 in Brussels, meanwhile, in a newer poll in Greece, the composite name that includes the name Macedonia for the country seemed, for the first time, to be marginally more popular than the previous more hard line stance of no Macedonia in the title 43% versus 42%. In the same poll, 84% of the respondents were pro veto in the country's NATO accession talks, if the issue had not been resolved by then. All Greek political parties except the small nationalist party Popular Orthodox Rally support the composite name for all uses solution, and are vehemently opposed to any double name formula which is proposed by the Republic. This shift in the official and public position was described by the PM of Greece as the maximum recoil possible. Following his visit to Athens in an attempt to persuade the Greek government not to proceed to a veto, the NATO Secretary General Yap de Hoop Sheffer implied that the onus to compromise rested on the Republic of Macedonia. In the same spirit, the EU Enlargement Commissioner Oli Wren expressed his fear that it might have negative consequences on FYROM's EU bid, although it is a bilateral question. Greece, as any other EU member, has the right to veto. On 5 March 2008, Nimitz visited Skopje to try to find common ground on his proposal, but announced that the gap remains. As earlier anticipated, on 6 March 2008, in the NATO Foreign Ministers' Summit in Brussels, Greek Minister Dora Bakayanis announced that, as regards the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia, Unfortunately, the policy followed by our neighboring country in its relations with Greece, on the one side with intransigence and on the other with a logic of nationalist and irredentist actions tightly connected with the naming issue, does not allow us to maintain a positive stance, as we did for Croatia and Albania. As long as there is no such solution, Greece will remain an insuperable obstacle to the European and Euro-Atlantic ambition of Firum. On 7 March 2008, the U.S. Assistant Secretary of State for European and Eurasian Affairs, Daniel Fried, made an unscheduled visit to Skopje, with the message that the two sides must cooperate with Matthew Nimitz to find a mutually acceptable solution for the naming dispute. Concerns have been expressed in Skopje and Athens on the stability of the governing coalition of VMRO DPMNE and Democratic Party of Albanians DPA and subsequently the negotiating power of PM Nikola Gruevski with regards to the naming dispute, after the leader of DPA Menda Thaci accused the government of not complying with its requests about the rights of Albanians in the Republic of Macedonia. Greek media considered the option that the crisis might be a diplomatic way of increasing the pressure on the Greek side. Following a call for cooperation by the president Branko Kravenkovsky, the other four major parties agreed to support Gruevski's government until NATO's convention in Bucharest on the 4th of April 2008. The possibility of a failure of the ascension talks is met with unease by the ethnic Albanian part of the population that places more importance on EU and NATO membership than on the Macedonia name issue. Following the declaration of Athens for a veto, the press in Skopje reported increased intervention from the United States to solve the dispute through Victoria Nuland, the U.S. NATO ambassador. Antonio Milosowski announced that Nimitz's proposal remains unchanged. The daily newspaper Denevnik reported that diplomatic sources claimed that this would be the last attempt from the American leadership to help in finding a solution, and that the target of this effort would be for the country to retreat from its position in regard to a double name formula, and for Greece to accept something along these lines. It continued by saying that the U.S. would exercise pressure on both sides to find a solution before NATO's summit, so that the alliance could be expanded. Oli Wren urged, "...the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia to show the correct political will in seizing the opportunity to find an acceptable solution for both parts." A new meeting between Nimitz and the two parties was arranged on 17 March 2008 in Vienna, in the office of the former UN Special Envoy to Kosovo and ex-president of Finland, Marti Atisari. Nimitz noted that he did not present any new proposals, thanked the United States with whom he said he was in contact, and urged more countries to help in solving the dispute. He also announced that he was more optimistic after this meeting, and that he focused only on the solutions that could be applied by NATO's summit in April.
According to the press in the Republic of Macedonia Nimitz now limited his proposal to three names of the five that were proposed in his original framework. Republic of Upper Macedonia New Republic of Macedonia or Republic of New Macedonia Republic of Macedonia Skopje of the three, Greek media have reported that the only serious contender is New Macedonia, being the solution favored throughout the current round of negotiations by Washington, which regards it as the most neutral option. According to some reports, all three proposals were swiftly rejected by Skopje on the grounds that neither would constitute a logical basis for a solution, given that all had been rejected by one or the other side over the last 15 years. Greek diplomatic sources have intimated that international pressure has now shifted towards the former Yugoslav Republic. A special meeting outside the auspices of the UN was arranged on the 21st of March 2008 at US ambassadors to NATO Victoria Nuland's house in Brussels between the two foreign ministers Dora Bakayanis and Antonio Milosavski and with the presence of the US Assistant Secretary of State for European and Eurasian Affairs Daniel Fried. Following the meeting, both ministers stressed for the first time their commitment for finding a solution until NATO's summit. The first voices seeking compromise have started to be heard in Skopje. The President of the Republic, Branko Krvenkovsky, announced, If during the ongoing talks we can reach a rational compromise, which from the one side will defend our ethnic identity, and from the other will enable us to receive the NATO invitation, while at the same time cancelling our further EU accession obstacles, then I think that this is something that must be supported, and I personally side with the supporters. Some accuse me that with my stance I am undermining the negotiating position of the Republic of Macedonia, yet I do not agree, because we are not in the beginning, but in the final phase of the negotiations. The one who will tell me that the price is high, is obliged to address the public opinion and announce an alternative scenario on how Macedonia will develop in the next 10 to 15 years. In the same spirit, opposing new Social Democratic Party party leader Tito Petkovsky, which by now participates in the governmental coalition until NATO's summit, announced, I do not hide that we must proceed on an international usage names change, with some type of addition, which in no way must put our values under question. I do not want to proceed in an auction with the name, because that will be very damaging also for the interests of the neighboring country that disputes it. He added that. The overwhelming majority of the state and the scholars, ask for a solution and for a way out, using something that does not put our identity and our cultural distinction under questioning. I think that such a solution can be found, especially if the greatest lobbyists and supporters of ours, the United States, declare that Macedonia will be safe, with a safe territorial integrity, with financial support and dynamic development. If we declare which name we support, probably there will be more terms. However, governing VMRO DPMNE party leader, and current Prime Minister, Nikola Gruevsky, when asked to comment on these statements, said, We have different views from Mr. Petkovsky, however there is still time to overcome these differences and reach a solution which will benefit the country. Center-left Greek newspaper Tavima reported that the two countries were close to an agreement on the basis of the name. New Macedonia, or the untranslated native form, Nova Macedonia. Another meeting under the auspices of UN mediator Matthew Nimitz was held in New York on 25 March 2008. Nimitz announced his final proposal, with a name, with a geographic dimension, and for all purposes. He also noted that the proposal was a compromise, and that the ways of implementation were also included in his proposal. The two representatives will urgently return to their countries for consultation on this proposal, given the short timeframe until NATO's summit. According to the latest Greek media reports, Nimitz revived his 2005 proposal, Republic of Macedonia Skopje. The news agency for Macedonian private television station A1 reported that the full proposal was the constitutional name, in Cyrillic, Republica Macedonia, could be used for internal purposes. Republic of Macedonia Skopje, would be used for international relations. For bilateral relations, Republic of Macedonia Skopje, is suggested, and any countries using the state's constitutional name would be encouraged to use it, but not forced to change it. The terms, 
Macedonia and Macedonian on their own, would be able to be used freely by both countries. The Macedonian government has not yet issued a statement on whether the proposal has been accepted or rejected. Greek Foreign Minister Dora Bakianis told journalists that the proposal does not meet Greece's stated objectives. The Macedonian Foreign Minister, Antonio Milosowski, stated that any reasonable solution that did not impose on the identity of ethnic Macedonians would be explored. However, he also stated that if Greece were to veto the country's entrance into NATO, compromise talks would be stopped. Meanwhile, police in Skopje said they were investigating death threats against academics, journalists and politicians who publicly favor reaching a compromise in the dispute with Greece. Topic: <laughs> NATO non-invitation. On 3 April 2008, at NATO's summit in Bucharest, Greece presented its case on the non-invitation of the Republic. NATO Secretary General Yap de Hoop Scheffer announced the mutually agreed text of the NATO members, which included the following points. Reason for no invitation was the inability to find solution in the name dispute. Open invitation to the government of Skopje for new negotiations for the name under the auspices of the United Nations. The wish that those negotiations start as soon as possible. And the further wish that they are concluded as soon as possible, without mentioning a specific time frame. A major concern cited by Greek officials was a number of maps that have circulated by nationalist groups based in Skopje depicting parts of Greece, including Thessaloniki, Greece's second largest city, as being part of a future united Macedonia, and the country's prime minister photographed laying a wreath under such a map just a few weeks before the summit. Also a poster displayed in Skopje just days before the Bucharest summit by an artist replacing the white cross on the Greek flag with the swastika, as a way of comparing modern Greece to Nazi Germany and caricatures of Greek PM Karamanlis depicted wearing a Nazi SS uniform led to vigorous Greek diplomatic protests and international condemnation although the government disassociated itself from the depictions and expressed it has no connection and no authority over artists' works. According to Greek media reports, the Greek position was strongly supported by France and Spain. Italy, Portugal, Luxembourg, Iceland, Belgium, Hungary, Slovakia, and the Netherlands also showed understanding to the Greek concerns. The U.S. proposal for inviting the country under its UN Provisional Reference Firum was backed by Turkey, Slovenia, the Czech Republic, Estonia, Lithuania, Denmark, Bulgaria and Norway, Germany, the United Kingdom and Canada were reported neutral. According to polls, 95% of Greeks believed the veto appropriate, while only 1% opposed it. Then Foreign Affairs Minister Dora Bakayanis stated that her country would continue to focus on promoting its neighbors' NATO and EU accession as soon as the naming issue is resolved. Antikization Policy, 2006-2017 Since coming to power in 2006, and especially since the Republic of Macedonia's non-invitation to NATO in 2008, the nationalist VMRODPMNE government pursued a policy of «antikization» as a way of putting pressure on Greece as well as for the purposes of domestic identity building. Antikization is also spreading due to a very intensive lobbying of the Macedonian diaspora from the USA, Canada, Germany and Australia. As part of this policy, stations and airports were renamed after ancient Macedonian figures, and statues of Alexander the Great and Philip II of Macedon were built in several cities across the country. In 2011, a massive, 22 metres tall statue of Alexander the Great called Warrior on a Horse because of the dispute with Greece was inaugurated in Macedonia Square in Skopje, as part of the Skopje 2014 remodeling of the city. An even larger statue of Philip II was under construction at the other end of the square. Statues of Alexander also adorn the town squares of Prilep and Stip, while a statue to Philip II of Macedon was recently built in Bitola. A triumphal arch named Porta Macedonia, constructed in the same square, features images of historical figures including Alexander the Great, causing the Greek Foreign Ministry to lodge an official complaint to authorities in the Republic of Macedonia. Additionally, many pieces of public infrastructure, such as airports, highways, and stadiums have been named after them. Skopje's airport was renamed, Alexander the Great Airport, and features antique objects moved from Skopje's archaeological museum. 
One of Skopje's main squares has been renamed Pella Square after Pella, the capital of the ancient kingdom of Macedon, which falls within modern Greece, while the main highway to Greece was renamed to Alexander of Macedon, and Skopje's largest stadium was renamed Philip II Arena. These actions were seen as deliberate provocations in neighboring Greece, exacerbating the dispute and further stalling Macedonia's EU and NATO applications. Antikization faced criticism by academics as it demonstrated feebleness of archaeology and of other historical disciplines in public discourse, as well as a danger of marginalization. The policy also attracted criticism domestically, by ethnic Macedonians within the country, who saw it as dangerously dividing the country between those who identify with classical antiquity and those who identify with the country's Slavic culture. Ethnic Albanians in the Republic of Macedonia saw it as an attempt to marginalize them and exclude them from the national narrative. The policy, which also claims as ethnic Macedonians figures considered national heroes in Bulgaria, such as Dame Groove and Gotsi Delchev, also drew criticism from Bulgaria. Foreign diplomats warned that the policy reduced international sympathy for the Republic of Macedonia in the naming dispute with Greece. A continuing negotiation The Assembly of the Republic of Macedonia voted on of April 2008 to dissolve itself and hold early elections within 60 days. Following a meeting with the four major parties, President Branko Kravenkovsky announced the continuation of the negotiations for the name, despite the parliament dissolution. The parties agreed that the dispute should not be a matter of heavy political debate before the elections. Matthew Nimitz visited Skopje on the 17th of April 2008 and Athens on the following day, initiating a new cycle of negotiations, but without bearing a new proposal yet. Talks continued in New York from the 30th of April to the 2nd of May 2008, though Nimitz again did not propose a new compromise name. Topic: 2008 proposal and reactions. According to media from both sides, the main points of the proposal from 8 October 2008 are the following The name, Republic of Macedonia, will stay the official name inside the country in the native language. The name for the country in all official purposes i.e. United Nations, EU, NATO will be, Republic of North Macedonia, Macedonian, Republika Suverna Macedonia UN Security Council will suggest to third countries to use the name Republic of North Macedonia in official bilateral relations. The name Former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia will no longer be an acceptable name for the country. Macedonia alone cannot be used by any of the two parties as an official name for the country or the region. Both parties can use Macedonia and Macedonian, in unofficial settings, with the precondition that they will not claim exclusive rights of any kind. The front page of the Macedonian passports will contain the following names for the country Republic of North Macedonia in English, République de Macedoine du Nord in French, Republica Macedonia in Macedonian. Greece will support the integration of its neighboring country into EU and NATO. Both countries will confirm that they have no territorial claims towards each other. Topic. Reaction by ethnic Macedonian politicians, diplomats The cabinet of the President of the Republic of Macedonia, Branko Kravenkovsky, announced that the Republic of Macedonia wants serious changes in the latest proposal and that the presented set of ideas could not be a basis for the resolution of the dispute. Prime Minister Nikola Gruevsky agreed with Kravenkovsky. Topic. Reaction by Greek politicians, diplomats The English edition of the Greek newspaper Kathamarini reported that Greek diplomats, privately, have welcomed the proposals. Greek Foreign Minister Dora Bakayanis, however, has not yet made a comment on the newest set of proposals. It is also said, that Athens will not state its position before Skopje. In the meantime, all major opposition parties have already expressed serious concerns about the proposal since it crosses the red line that Greece has set on a single name to be used Erga Omnes. 
Before either Athens or Skopje had officially responded to the proposal, the Athenian Daily Ethnos published an alleged secret diplomatic correspondence of the U.S. State Department. The leaked document, originally tagged as classified until 2018, was said to detail a behind-the-scenes deal between Washington and Skopje on the main provisions of the Nimitz proposal as early as July. According to the newspaper, the latest UN-sponsored set of ideas were secretly sketched to please Skopje by the U.S. Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice three months earlier. The report sparked outrage in Greece, with opposition parties accusing the government of tolerating U.S. interference in the UN mediation process and calling for Greece's withdrawal from the negotiations. Skopje, strongly and categorically, denied all claims of the existence of a secret deal with Washington. Topic. Reaction by Bulgarian politicians, diplomats Bulgarian Prime Minister Boyko Borisov, stated in June 2012 that names like «Northern Macedonia» would be completely unacceptable, since this geographical term would include Bulgarian territories, and more specifically the region of Blagovgrad, giving rise to irredentist territorial claims by nationalist ethnic Macedonians against Bulgaria. Topic. The International Court of Justice In November 2008, Skopje instituted proceedings against Athens in front of the UN's International Court of Justice for what it described as a flagrant violation of Greece's obligations under Article 11 of the Interim Accord signed by the parties on 13 September 1995. The alleged violation was referring to the blockade by Athens to Macedonia's bid for NATO membership. Following the submissions of memorials and counter-memorials, and the public hearings, the legal positions of the parties were as follows. Republic of Macedonia requested that Greek objections to the jurisdiction of the court should be rejected. The court should adjudge and declare that Greece has violated the obligations under the provisions of the Interim Accord, Article 11, Paragraph 1, and the court to order Greece to immediately take all necessary steps to comply with the obligations under the above provisions, and to refrain from objecting in any way, directly or indirectly, to the membership of the Republic of Macedonia in NATO and or any other international, multilateral and regional organizations and institutions, if the Republic of Macedonia applies for such membership under the name, former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia. The Hellenic Republic requested that the court, should find that the case does not fall within the jurisdiction of the court and to reject it as inadmissible in the event that the court finds that it has jurisdiction over the case submitted by the applicant, then to find those claims as unfounded, the court delivered its judgment on 5 December 2011. In its judgment, which is final, without possibility for appeal, and binding on the parties, the ICJ found that it has jurisdiction to process this case, the Hellenic Republic, by objecting to the admission of the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia to NATO, has breached its obligation under Article 11, Paragraph 1, of the Interim Accord of 13 September 1995. Rejected all other submissions made by the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia, the ICJ decision was welcomed by the Macedonian Foreign Minister Nikola Popowski, who stated that Macedonia remains strongly committed to finding a lasting, mutually acceptable solution to the difference with Greece over the name." On the other hand, the response of the Ministry for Foreign Affairs of Greece was that they're reviewing the decision and that, "...Greece will continue to pursue negotiations in good faith to reach a mutually acceptable solution on the name of the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia." The court however did not grant Macedonia's request that it instruct Greece to refrain from similar actions in the future, nor has there been to date a change in the EU's stance that Macedonia's accession negotiations cannot begin until the name issue is resolved. Topic. Political reactions to the application in the ICJ Greece issued a statement condemning its northern neighbour for confirming that it is not interested in a solution adding that, "...the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia has itself flagrantly violated a series of fundamental obligations expressly foreseen by the Accord, including the fundamental principle of good neighborly relations." 
The Prime Minister of the Republic of Macedonia Nikola Gruevski announced on 25 November 2008 that the "...name negotiations will resume despite Macedonia's lawsuit against Greece." The EU has so far not commented on the latest situation. Reinforcing the Greek position that in the summit of Bucharest there was no veto, on 21 November in a conference in Skopje, the Czech representative in NATO Stefan Fuhl reiterated that there has not been a veto from Greece but that there was not a consensus on invitation. The Gruevsky government's decision to pursue legal action against Athens was criticized by then-president Branko Kravenkovsky, highlighting the internal tensions in Skopje between the government and the presidency. Noting that the process could take years, the president called it a waste of valuable time, given that there was no way for the world court to enforce any verdict in Skopje's favor. Topic. Talks in 2009 The first round of name talks in 2009 took place on of February. The UN mediator Nimitz did not propose a new solution for the name Rho, but it was agreed that talks should continue after elections in Greece and the Republic of Macedonia, probably in July or August. Republic of Macedonia's new name negotiator Zoran Jolevsky told the mediator and the Greek negotiator that if the Republic of Macedonia would receive a NATO membership invitation at the alliance's next summit in April, this would be positive for the name talks. One week before the fresh name talks, Macedonian Foreign Minister Antonio Milosovsky told German newspaper Die Tagesiding that a solution could be found, "...only on bilateral basis." The Republic of Macedonia indicated it could be ready to allow Greece to use another name for the country, such as, "...Republic of Macedonia Skopia. However, its citizens would decide on a referendum for that. In addition, Foreign Minister Antonio Milosovsky sent a letter to the Greek Foreign Ministry with a proposal of forming a joint committee of scholars from both countries who would work on determining the historical facts of the dispute, but this was promptly dismissed by Athens. Topic. CSIS conference On 14 April 2009, at the Center for Strategic and International Studies conference on the topic of completing America's mission in the Balkans moderated by Janusz Bogajski, the ambassador of Macedonia H.E. Zoran Jolevski stated, Greece, in essence, moved the goalposts further away, and our fear is that they will continue to move the goalposts again, and again, and again. The question then becomes, will they stop? Because, dear friends, the dignity and identity of an entire nation is at stake here that cannot be compromised. Later on, they moved into an open discussion where the Greek ambassador in the U.S. Alexandros Malias stated that Greece would accept the last proposal by the UN mediator Matthew Nimitz for the international use of Republic of Northern Macedonia. Topic. Geneva talks. On the 22nd of June 2009, the UN mediator Matthew Nimitz, together with the negotiators from both sides gathered in Geneva to discuss the differences and the problematic points of the dispute. According to Nimitz, the negotiations had made some progress which identified and discussed the issues that had so far stalled the solution process. Both sides were strong on their positions. Mediator Nimitz visited the Republic of Macedonia on July 6 to July 8, then Greece from July 8 to July 10. Topic. August 2009 In August 2009, UN mediator Matthew Nimitz expressed pessimism regarding the Greek response to the names he proposed in his July meetings. Nimitz said, "...efforts to solve the name issue continue, even though Greece's answer is not positive." According to the Greek representative, Athens would not accept a proposed formulation that was only intended for use in bilateral relations, and insisted that any name that is decided must be used internationally. In late August, Nimitz met Zoran Jolevsky, the ethnic Macedonian negotiator who said that Macedonia is committed to active participation in the talks over the name and we expect a mutually acceptable solution, which will ensure preserving of the identity, dignity and integrity of the Macedonian citizens on the basis of Euro-Atlantic values and democratic principles." The name talks were frozen because of Athens' rejection of essential points in the most recent proposal and the elections in Greece in October. 
The actual talks may, it is reported, restart in May 2010 when the new Greek Prime Minister will have more space for negotiations. Topic. Developments in 2010 Topic. April 2010 In early April 2010, it emerged that the Greek government considered «Northern Macedonia» a possible compromise name, indicating it was up to the Republic of Macedonia to decide whether to accept that proposal. The Macedonian Prime Minister Nikola Gruevski declared he would reject this proposition and called for a vote on the new name. Topic. June 2010 The June 13 issue of Kathamarini reported that sources claim that Greece and the Republic of Macedonia appear to be close to a solution to their name dispute, and are set to agree on using the name of the Vardar River the longest river in the Republic of Macedonia to differentiate the Republic of Macedonia from Greek Macedonia. It is not clear at this stage if this would mean Republic of Macedonia would be called Republic of Macedonia of Vardar Republic of Vardar Macedonia Vardar Republic of Macedonia, or Republic of Macedonia. Vardar. Macedonian diaspora organizations, such as the Macedonian Human Rights Movement International and the Australian Macedonian Human Rights Committee, have launched a campaign placing advertisements in newspapers and billboards across Macedonia, demanding an end to all negotiations with Greece over its name. Topic. Developments in 2011 Reports were released that Antonis Samaras, the leader of New Democracy, will be summoned to the Hague trial issued by Skopje on Greece for breaking the 1995 interim agreement, after evidence was found of him addressing the Greek parliament and clearly stating that his government New Democracy then in power vetoed the invitation of the Republic of Macedonia at the 2008 Bucharest NATO summit. Also in this year the dispute was inflamed by the erection of a statue in Skopje of a mounted warrior which copies a portrait of Alexander the Great attributed to the ancient Greek sculptor Lysippus, and the inauguration of a sports stadium named after Alexander's father Philip II. In his farewell speech to the Parliament, the outgoing Prime Minister George Papandreou listed the immediate settlement of the name issue as one of the three priorities of the next government. On 5 December, the International Court of Justice ruled 15 to 1, the Greek judge being the sole dissenter, that Greece has breached the 1995 interim accord and thus was wrong to block its neighbor's application for NATO membership at the Bucharest NATO summit in 2008. However, the court also affirmed that it did not have jurisdiction to order Greece not to bring the issue up in other fora as it should be assumed that states act in good faith. Topic. November 2012 talks After nearly two years of separate meetings between UN mediator Matthew Nimitz and the two negotiators, a joint round of negotiations occurred in the UN headquarters in New York. The UN mediator presented recommendations and ideas to both parties to consider, however, these proposals are not yet known to the general public. 2013 proposals In April 2013, Matthew Nimitz proposed the name the Upper Republic of Macedonia which was backed by EU Enlargement Commissioner Stefan Fuhl. This proposal came after the Republic of Macedonia had previously rejected the Republic of Upper Macedonia as a name. Greece has indicated that it would allow the Republic of Macedonia to join the EU and NATO if the word upper was included in its official name. In October 2013 Greece's chief negotiator in the naming dispute, Adamantios Vasilakis, proposed the name the Slavic Albanian Macedonia to end the dispute. According to the Greek newspaper Kathamarini, Vasilakis's remark however had been misinterpreted, as he had only launched Slavic Albanian Macedonia as a theoretical suggestion, and not a real serious suggestion, in order to describe the complexity of the problem from the Greek viewpoint. Topic. December 2013 Virginia Sun draft law In November 2013, the Liberal Party of Macedonia proposed a draft law to ban the use of the Virginia Sun for civil purposes within the Republic of Macedonia, as 
a positive step that will result in the promotion of good neighborly relations between Macedonia and Greece." Greece claims the Virginia Sun as an exclusive national state symbol and lodged a claim for trademark protection of it with the WIPO in 1995. The draft law requires use of the WIPO protected Greek symbol to be banned from use in the Macedonian President's Office, events organized under state administration, public Macedonian institutions or political parties, NGOs, media, as well as individuals in the Republic of Macedonia. However, the draft was rejected in December 2013 by the VMRO DPM and E led majority of the Macedonian Parliament. 2014 negotiations In February 2014, the European Parliament passed a resolution stating that according to the Parliament's assessment, the Copenhagen criteria have been fulfilled sufficiently for the country to start its negotiations for EU accession, and called for the Council of the European Union to confirm the date for start of accession negotiations straight away, as bilateral disputes must not be an obstacle for the start of talks although they must be solved before the accession process. However, whether or not the Council agreed with the Parliament's opinion, it made no mention of Macedonia's accession negotiations at its meeting in June 2014. The UN mediator, Matthew Nimitz, also invited for a new round of name dispute negotiations to begin on 26 March 2014. The invitation has been accepted by both the Greek and Macedonian authorities. According to Nimitz, the two countries had managed at the latest stranded talks in October 2013, to reach consensus of adding a geographic term to the disputed Republic of Macedonia name, to be used internationally as the new official country name. Nimitz stressed however, that substantial disagreement still existed in regards of where the geographic term should be placed, but hoped a new round of negotiations could end with a mutually agreed name. According to the newspaper coverage of the previous 2013 negotiations, Macedonia had favoured using the name Upper Republic of Macedonia, while Greece insisted it could only approve Republic of Upper Macedonia, while disagreement also existed towards the scope of using the new official name, with Macedonia only being ready to accept its use in bilateral affairs involving Greece and not ready to accept the Greek demand of using it obligatory for all purposes. 2017–2018 developments After successive defeats of the nationalist VMRO DPM and E in both the general and municipal elections of the Republic of Macedonia, and the arrival to power of the pro-solution coalition led by the SDSM and DIU, efforts for the resolution of the naming dispute gained a new momentum, with the new Prime Minister Zoran Zave vowing his determination to resolve the decades-old dispute with Greece. Efforts between the governments of the two countries for resolving the name dispute intensified, and on 17 January 2018, UN-sponsored negotiations had resumed. The ambassadors Adamantios Vasilakis of Greece and Vasco Namovsky of Macedonia met in Washington with the UN envoy, who suggested any of the following five names in his proposal, all containing the name Macedonia transliterated from Cyrillic. Republica Nova Macedonia. Republic of New Macedonia. Republica Saverna Macedonia. Republic of North Macedonia. Republika Gorna Macedonia, Republic of Upper Macedonia, Republika Vardarska Macedonia, Republic of Vardar Macedonia, Republika Macedonia, Skopje, Republic of Macedonia, Skopje. Macedonia's Prime Minister Zoran Zave said that the solution of the name dispute with Greece will be subject to a nationwide referendum. High-level contacts between the governments of the two countries also intensified, with the Macedonian Deputy Prime Minister visiting Athens for the name talks on January 9, and the Macedonian PM Zave meeting with his Greek counterpart Alexis Tsipras on the sidelines of the World Economic Forum at Davos, Switzerland on January 24. In the Davos meeting, the first of its kind in seven years, there appeared to be some resolution between the two PMs to end the naming dispute and to improve the relations between the two countries. In this context, the Macedonian PM agreed to take initiatives that could soothe Greek concerns over anti-Kazation policies, while the Greek PM agreed to consent on Macedonia's bid to regional initiatives or agreements. 
After the Davos meeting, Zave announced that streets and locations such as the Alexander the Great Airport in Skopje which were named by the nationalist VMRO DPMNE after ancient Macedonian heroes and figures such as Alexander the Great, could be renamed as a sign of goodwill towards Greece. Specifically, Zave declared that the Alexander the Great Highway, the E75 motorway that connects Skopje to Greece, could be renamed to Friendship Highway. In exchange, the Greek PM announced that Greece could consent to Macedonia's bid to the Adriatic Ionian Cooperation Agreement and the Hellenic Parliament could ratify the second phase of the FIRAM European Union Association Agreement as part of the accession of Macedonia to the European Union, which was blocked in 2009 by Greece owing to the name dispute. The two PMs also agreed that the name talks would be promoted to the foreign ministerial level instead of the ambassadorial, with the foreign ministers of the two countries, Nikola Dimitrov of Macedonia and Nikos Katsias of Greece, replacing Namovsky and Vasilikas respectively. Furthermore, the two governments agreed to confidence building measures that could help improve the relations between the two countries. The latest options put forward by Skopje in February 2018 are Republic of North Macedonia. Republic of Upper Macedonia, Republic of Vardar Macedonia, and Republic of Macedonia Skopje. In late February 2018, the government and institutions of the Republic of Macedonia announced the halt of the Skopje 2014 program, which aimed to make Macedonia's capital have a more classical appeal, and begun removing its controversial monuments and statues. The Macedonian Ministry of Culture also has set up a commission to envisage the possibility of removing the rest of them, such as of Alexander the Great and Philip II of Macedon. In spring 2018, extensive negotiations in a bid to resolve the naming dispute were held in rounds, with frequent meetings of the foreign ministers of Greece and Macedonia achieving tangible progress on the naming dispute. Eventually, on May 17, at the sidelines of the EU Western Balkan Summit of Sofia, Bulgaria, the prime ministers of the two countries met, and discussed a new name, in addition to the five other names already proposed by UN envoy Nimitz. Republika Alindenska Macedonia Republic of Alinden Macedonia The Macedonian PM Zoran Zave said that the Macedonian side is willing to accept this name and have it be used for all purposes, which is one of the Greek conditions for resolving the naming dispute. On 1 November 2018, Greece resumed air travel to Macedonia for the first time in 12 years. The first flight was an Olympic air flight from Athens to Skopje, which included the Macedonian Deputy Prime Minister Bouyar Osmani, who was returning from talks in Greece. The same day, he tweeted that Greece had become Macedonia's greatest ally, and noted the re-establishment of air travel as a sign of improved relations. Topic: <laughs> Prespa Agreement. On the 12th of June 2018, Greek Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras announced that an agreement had been reached with his Macedonian counterpart Zoran Zave on the dispute which covers all the preconditions set by the Greek side. The proposal would result in the Republic of Macedonia being renamed the Republic of North Macedonia Macedonian, Republica Saverna Macedonia translate. Republica Saverna Macedonia, Greek, Democratia Tes Boreas Macedonias with the new name being used for all purposes erga omnes, that is, domestically, in all bilateral relations and in all regional and international organizations and institutions. The agreement was signed at Lake Prespa, a body of water which is divided between the Republic of Macedonia, Greece and Albania. The deal includes recognition of the Macedonian language in the United Nations, noting that it is within the group of South Slavic languages, and that the citizenship of the country will be called, Macedonian, citizen of the Republic of North Macedonia. Also, there would be an explicit clarification that the citizens of the country are not related to the ancient Macedonians. Specifically, Article 7 mentions that both countries acknowledge that their respective understanding of the terms Macedonia and Macedonian refers to a different historical context and cultural heritage. When reference is made to Greece, these terms denote the area and people of its northern region, as well as the Hellenic civilization, history and culture of that region. When reference is made to Republic of Macedonia, these terms denote its territory, language and people, with their own, distinctly different, history and culture. 
Additionally, the agreement stipulates the removal of the Virginia Sun from public use in the Republic of Macedonia and the formation of a committee for the review of school textbooks and maps in both countries for the removal of irredentist content and to align them with UNESCO and Council of Europe standards. These changes were put to a referendum for citizens of the Republic of Macedonia in the autumn of 2018. Topic. Reactions The international community reacted positively to the PRESPA agreement, with the media dubbing it as historic. The European Union welcomed it, with the European Council President Donald Tusk tweeting his sincere congratulations to Cyprus and Zave. I am keeping my fingers crossed. Thanks to you, the impossible is becoming possible, he said. EU Foreign Affairs Chief Federica Mogherini and Commissioner Johannes Hahn also issued a joint statement congratulating the two Prime Ministers, "...in reaching this historic agreement between their countries, which contributes to the transformation of the entire region of Southeast Europe." NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg welcomed the agreement, stating that it will set the Republic of Macedonia on the path towards NATO membership. Additionally, the British Foreign Minister Boris Johnson welcomed the agreement as being "...fantastic news. The agreement once and for always confirms and strengthens the Macedonian ethnic and cultural identity, the Macedonian language, the Macedonian nationality. It guarantees the security of the country and provides a secure future for the citizens of the Republic of Macedonia." Zave said, the domestic communities reacted more negatively to the agreement. In Macedonia, the President of the Republic, G. Jorge Ivanov, declared that he won't sign the agreement, calling it disastrous. Additionally, VMRODPMNE, a right-wing party, also opposed the agreement, and is organizing public protests against it. In Greece, Golden Dawn GD, a far-right party, and the Communist Party of Greece CPG, a far-left party, opposed the agreement, with a GDMP, Konstantinos Barbarossis, calling for military rule and firing squads to execute politicians responsible for the deal. As a result Barbarossis was expelled from his party, and a warrant was issued for his arrest for high treason. He fled using his parliamentary vehicle, but eventually was found and arrested. Additionally, the conservative New Democracy Party filed a motion of no confidence against Tsipras in Parliament because of the name deal, which was rejected two days later with a simple parliamentary majority, 153 against it, 127 for. In Macedonia, protests went violent at Skopje, and Macedonian SDSM MP Hari Lokvanek, who attended the Prespa ceremony, had his parliamentary vehicle set on fire at Bitola by unidentified perpetrators. Topic. Signature The PRESPA agreement, which replaces the Interim Accord of 1995, was signed on 17 June 2018 in a high-level ceremony at the Greek border village of Sarades on Lake PRESPA, by the two foreign ministers Nikola Dimitrov and Nikos Katsias and in the presence of the respective prime ministers, Zoran Zave and Alexis Tsipras. The meeting was attended by the UN Special Representative Matthew Nimitz, the Undersecretary General for Political Affairs Rosemary De Carlo, the EU's High Representative of the Union for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy Federica Mogherini, and the European Commissioner for Enlargement and European Neighbourhood Policy Johannes Hahn, among others. After the ceremony, Tsipras, along with his Macedonian counterpart, crossed over the border to the Macedonian side of Lake Prespa for lunch at the village of Odisevo, in a highly symbolic move that marked the first time a Greek prime minister ever entered the Republic of Macedonia since it declared independence in 1991. Topic. Further developments on June 13, Zave said that Macedonia is changing the license plates of its vehicles from MK to NMK to reflect the country's new name. The Macedonian government announced that the statues of Alexander the Great, Philip II of Macedon, and Olympias of Epirus, which were raised as part of the Skopje 2014 program, will be given new inscriptions with clarifications that they symbolize the ancient Greek period and are honoring Greek Macedonian friendship. On June 20, the PRESPA agreement was ratified by the Parliament of the Republic of Macedonia with 69 MPs voting in favour of it. Opposition party VMRODPMNE boycotted the parliamentary session and declared the PRESPA treaty as a «genocide of the legal state» and a «genocide of the entire nation». 
On June 25, the Greek Foreign Ministry informed the EU and NATO that Greece is no longer objecting to Macedonia's Euro-Atlantic accession under the new name. The next day, however, the Macedonian president G. Jorge Ivanov refused to sign the agreement and threatened the Macedonian PM Zave and the ruling coalition's MPs with imprisonment of at least five years for voting in favor of an agreement which, according to Ivanov, puts the Republic of Macedonia in a subordinate position to a foreign state. I do not accept the constitutional change aimed at changing the constitutional name of the country. I do not accept ideas or proposals which would endanger Macedonia's national identity, the individuality of the Macedonian nation, the Macedonian language and the Macedonian model of coexistence. In the presidential election, 534,910 citizens voted in favor of this electoral program and elected me as President of the Republic of Macedonia. The agreement goes beyond the scope of United Nations Security Council Resolutions 817 and 845 since it refers to the «difference in the name of the state» and not to the «disputes» to which the agreement refers. Ivanov said, adding that «this agreement brings the Republic of Macedonia to subordination from another country, namely the Republic of Greece. According to Article 308 of the Penal Code, a citizen who brings the Republic of Macedonia to a state of subservience or dependence on another state is punishable by imprisonment of at least five years." The legalization of this agreement creates legal consequences that are the basis for committing a crime. The withdrawal of the Greek veto, resulted in the European Union approving on June 27 the start of accession talks with the Republic of Macedonia, which are expected in 2019, under the condition that the Prespa deal is implemented and Macedonia's constitutional name is changed to Republic of North Macedonia. On July 5, the Prespa agreement was ratified again by the Macedonian parliament with 69 MPs voting in favour of it. On July 11, NATO invited invited Macedonia to start accession talks in a bid to become the Euro-Atlantic Alliance's 30th member. On July 30, the Parliament of Macedonia approved plans to hold a non-binding referendum on changing the country's name that took place on September 30. 91% of voters voted in favor with a 37% turnout, but the referendum was not carried because of a constitutional requirement for a 50% turnout. The government intended to push forward with the name change. On October 15, the Parliament of Macedonia began debating the name change. The proposal for the constitutional reform requires the vote of 80 MPs, i.e., two thirds of the 120 seat parliament. On 16 October, U.S. Assistant Secretary of State Wesses Mitchell sent a letter to VMRO DPMNE leader Rischagen Mikowski, in which he expresses the disappointment of the United States with the positions of the leadership, including him personally, and asks to set aside partisan interests and work to get the name change approved. Mikowski expressed his hope that the Republic of Macedonia will be very soon a part of the NATO and EU families." But proud and dignified, not humiliated, disfigured and disgraced. On 19 October the Parliament voted to start the process of renaming the country. North Macedonia, after a total of 80 MPs voted in favor of the constitutional changes, on 30 October, the Skopje Public Prosecutor's Office has opened a case against Macedonian President G. Jorge Ivanov for his refusal to fulfill his constitutional obligations in signing the Prespa Agreement after it was ratified by the Macedonian Parliament. <laughs> Greek position The constitutional name of the country, Republic of Macedonia, and the short name, Macedonia, when referring to the country, can be considered offensive by Greeks. The Greek government officially uses the United Nations provisional reference for the country, the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia, which is also used by many other international organizations. The Greek Ministry of Foreign Affairs has described their concerns as follows. The issue of the name of the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia is not just a dispute over historical facts or symbols. 
It concerns the conduct of a UN member state, the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia, which contravenes the fundamental principles of international law and order, specifically, respect for good neighborly relations, sovereignty and territorial integrity. The name issue is thus a problem with regional and international dimensions, consisting in the promotion of irredentist and territorial ambitions on the part of the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia, mainly through the counterfeiting of history and usurpation of Greece's national, historical and cultural heritage. The roots of the name issue go back to the mid-1940s, when, in the aftermath of the Second World War, Commander-in-Chief Tito separated from Serbia the region that had been known until that time as Vardar Banovina today's former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia, giving it the status of a federal unit of the new Socialist Federal Republic of Macedonia SIC, renaming it, initially, the People's Republic of Macedonia, and, later, the Socialist Republic of Macedonia. At the same time, he started to cultivate the idea of a separate and discreet Macedonian nation. The former prime minister and leader of the governing party, Pazak, George Papandreou has stated that when he was minister for foreign affairs in January 2002, was next to a deal with Skopje leadership about using Gorna Macedonia, Gorna Macedonia, Upper Macedonia, in Slavic. The other parties and the Greek president, he said, were informed but the proposal failed because the 2001 Macedonia conflict had broken out. The Academy of Athens concludes, The adoption of a compound name with a geographic content and with respect for the distinction between ancient Macedonia and the state of Firum, would serve both the truth and the present-day needs of the geographic region and of the larger area surrounding it. The Greek interest does indicate the concern of public opinion in the face of intransigent provocations on the part of Skopje that tend, as is evident even in the school textbooks, not only to appropriate but even to monopolize the history, the cultural achievements, the symbols, including the ancient ones, the monuments, and the personalities that were active in the Macedonian area in the past. It is self-evident that the expression of goodwill on the part of any Greek government is not sufficient to overcome the fact or the effects of nationalist excesses similar to those that were artfully cultivated during the post-war period. The Greek concerns can be analyzed as follows. Topic. Historical concerns According to historian Eugene Borza, the ethnic Macedonians, being a newly emergent people in search of a past to help legitimize their precarious present, whose ethnicity developed in the 20th century, had no history and needed one. Greeks argue that the name Macedonia is historically inseparably associated with Greek culture, ever since the ancient kingdom of Macedonia and the ancient Macedonians. They therefore consider that only Greeks have a historical right to use the name today, since the modern southern Slavs arrived 1,000 years after that kingdom, lacking any relation to ancient Macedonia or its Greek culture. Efforts by ethnic Macedonians to construct a narrative of ethnic continuity linking them to the ancient Macedonians in various ways and symbolic actions underlining such claims, such as the public use of the Virginia Sun symbol as a flag of the Republic of Macedonia, or the renaming of Skopje Airport to Alexander the Great Airport meets strong criticism from the Greek side. Much of the international media that report on the issue, and even from moderate political views in the Republic of Macedonia itself, a 22 meter tall statue, Man on a Horse, depicting Alexander the Great, was erected in 2011 in Skopje, the capital city of the Republic of Macedonia, as part of a historical public arts building campaign. Greece scornfully characterized the effort, with the foreign ministry commenting on the size of the statue as inversely proportional to seriousness and historical truth. The project received criticism by the European Union, calling it not helpful, as well as by Skopje architects and ethnic Macedonian academics and politicians commenting on the aesthetic outcome and the semantics of such a move. Some Greek historians emphasize the late emergence of a Macedonian. Nation, often pointing to 1944 as the date of its artificial creation under Josip Broz Tito, discounting earlier roots in the 19th and early 20th century. The Greek view also stresses that the name Macedonia as a geographical term historically used to refer typically to the southern, Greek parts of the region, including the capital of the ancient kingdom, Pella, and not or only marginally to the territory of today's republic. They also note that the territory was not called Macedonia as a political entity until 1944. 
Several hundred international and Greek classical scholars have lobbied for the historical concerns regarding the name dispute to be reflected in U.S. policy. Territorial concerns During the Greek Civil War, in 1947, the Greek Ministry of Press and Information published a book, He Anantian Tes Helados Epibule Designs on Greece, including documents and speeches on the ongoing Macedonian issue, many translations from Yugoslav officials. It reports Josip Broz Tito using the term, Aegean Macedonia. On the 11th of October 1945 in the build-up to the Greek Civil War, the original document is archived in GFMA, 24581, G2 For Athens in 1947, the new term, Aegean Macedonia, also Pyrrhon Macedonia, was introduced by Yugoslavs. Contextually, this observation indicates this was part of the Yugoslav offensive against Greece, laying claim to Greek Macedonia, but Athens does not seem to take issue with the term itself. The 1945 date concurs with Bulgarian sources. Tito's wartime representative to Macedonia, General Tempo Svetozar Vukmanovic, is credited with promoting the usage of the new regional names of the Macedonian region for irredentist purposes. Concerns over territorial implications of the usage of the term Macedonian were expressed as early as 1944 by U.S. diplomats. Greece suspects that the Republic of Macedonia has territorial ambitions in the northern Greek provinces of Macedonia. This has been a Greek concern for decades. As far back as 1957, the Greek government expressed concern about reported Yugoslav ambitions to create an independent. People's Republic of Macedonia with the Greek city of Thessaloniki as its capital, ambitions that now exist amongst citizens of the Republic of Macedonia, Loring M. Danforth ascribes the goal of a free, united, and independent Macedonia, including liberated Bulgarian and Greek territory to a fraction of extreme Macedonian nationalists, whereas more moderate ethnic Macedonians recognize the inviolability of the borders but regard the presence of ethnic Macedonians in the neighboring countries as an issue of minority protection. Greek analysts and politicians have expressed concerns that overseas observers tend to overlook or not to understand the severity of the perceived territorial threat and tend to misunderstand the conflict as a trivial issue over just a name. The concerns are further reinforced by the fact that extremist ethnic Macedonian nationalists of the United Macedonia movement have expressed irredentist claims to what they refer to as Aegean Macedonia in Greece, Pyrrhon Macedonia in Bulgaria, Mala Prespa and Golo Brdo in Albania, and Gora and Prohor Pc Hinski. In Serbia, Greek Macedonians, Bulgarians, Albanians and Serbs form the overwhelming majority of the population of each part of the region respectively. Schoolbooks and official government publications in the Republic have shown the country as part of an unliberated whole. In April 2008, Foreign Minister of Greece Dora Bakayanis complained about the Prime Minister of the Republic of Macedonia Nikola Gruevski appearing in a photograph, by a map of Greater Macedonia. The complaint was made inside an article published at Wall Street Journal, regarding the NATO ascension talks. Self-determination According to both the official Greek position and various public demonstrations in Greece and the Greek diaspora, the Greek Macedonians feel that their right to self-determination is violated by what they regard as the monopolization of their name by a neighboring country. The strong regional identity of the Macedonians was emphasized by the Prime Minister of Greece, Kostas Karamanlis, who in January 2007 during a meeting of the Council of Europe in Strasbourg declared that I am a Macedonian, just like two and a half million Greeks. In Greece, the extreme position on the issue suggests that there must be no Macedonia in the title of a neighboring country, Professor Danforth reports, from the Greek nationalist perspective, then, the use of the name Macedonian by the Slavs of Skopje constitutes a felony, an act of plagiarism, against the Greek people. By calling themselves Macedonians, the Slavs are stealing a Greek name, they are embezzling Greek cultural heritage, they are falsifying Greek history. 
as Evangelos Kofos, a historian employed by the Greek Foreign Ministry told a foreign reporter, "...it is as if a robber came into my house and stole my most precious jewels—my history, my culture, my identity." More moderate positions suggest that a disambiguating element should be added to the name of the neighboring state and its people such as Vardar or New so as to illustrate the distinction between not just the two but all groups of self-identifying Macedonians. Topic: <laughs> Semiological confusion. The contemporary region of Macedonia is a wider region in the Balkan Peninsula that spans across several modern states, mainly Greece Greek Macedonia, Bulgaria Blagovgrad Province, the Republic of Macedonia, and Albania around Lake Ored. The definite borders of the region are vague, but most contemporary geographers agree on its general location. There are several ethnic groups in this region, mostly living within their respective states, all of which are technically Macedonians. In the regional sense, the republic itself has a substantial minority, 25.2% of ethnic Albanians who are Macedonians, both in the regional sense and as legal citizens of the republic. However, in a Balkans where ethnicity rather than nationhood defines people's identity, Albanians are never referred to or refer to themselves as Macedonians. The Greek position suggests that the monopolization of the name by the republic and its citizens creates semiological confusion as it becomes increasingly difficult to disambiguate which Macedonia, which Macedonians, and what Macedonian language are referred to in each occasion. According to a source Bulgarians living in Blagovgrad province Bulgarian Macedonia are reported to not identify themselves with their regional term, Macedonians, Macedonian Bulgarians, so as not to be confused with the ethnic Macedonians. According to other sources the traditional use of the term, Macedonians, in Bulgaria as a regional designation continues, Macedo romanians Aramanians are often called, Macedoni by Romanians, as opposed to the citizens of Macedonia, who are called Macedoneni. The Greek Macedonians demonstrate a strong regional identity and identify themselves as Plain Macedonians, who live in Plain Macedonia, speaking a Macedonian dialect of modern Greek. <laughs> <laughs> Ethnic Macedonian position Self-determination and self-identification Skopje rejects many of Athens' objections due to what it sees as several errors in the Greek claims. According to the government in Skopje, the preservation of the constitutional name, which is also used by many other international organizations, for both domestic and international use is of the utmost importance. The country asserts that it does not lay exclusive claim to the term Macedonia either in the geographic or the historic sense. Various demonstrations and protests in the Republic of Macedonia and the ethnic Macedonian diaspora, were held to support their view that their right to self-determination is violated by what they regard as the rejection of the name from the international community. The Macedonian Academy of Arts and Sciences suggests, and today Slavs have been living there Macedonia for a period of 1,400 years. What is more natural than that the Balkanized Slavs who have lived so long and continuously in Macedonia should be called Macedonians and their language Macedonian? Ethnic Macedonians claim they are descended from both original indigenous Macedonians and from the Slavic peoples who invaded the region in the 6th-8th century AD, thereby mixing both cultures and traditions. Historical perspective Authors and scholars in the Republic of Macedonia criticize Greece for claiming sole ownership of the ancient kingdom, the former arguing that historical sources indicate a significant political and cultural distance between ancient Greeks and Macedonians. By contrast, Greek and international authors and scholars use other data to suggest that ancient Macedonians spoke Greek and identified as Greeks. The ethnic Macedonian claim to continuity with ancient Macedonia is based on the indigenous population having mixed with the Slavic newcomers after their arrival in the 6th and 7th century, and retaining the Macedonian name and Macedonian traditions and culture. The name, Macedonia, continued in use as a geographical and political term throughout the ancient, Roman, medieval and modern eras. 
It is observed that much of today's Greek Macedonia was only fully Hellenized by political and military means in modern times. After the division of Macedonia in 1913, Greece carried out a policy of Hellenization of the local population, forcing name changes, religious affiliation, and writings of church frescoes and graves to Greek. During the Ioannis Metaxas era, Slavic-speaking Macedonians were deported or tortured for speaking or claiming to be Macedonian. Slavic Macedonians argue that they have a more legitimate claim to the name Macedonia than descendants of Greek settlers in Macedonia who had emigrated from Anatolia, Epirus and Thrace during the early 20th century. <laughs> <laughs> Ethnic Macedonian minority in Greece In the 6th and 7th centuries AD, Slavic people migrated into northern Greece and competed with the Greek ethnic population of Macedonia, although over time adopting the Eastern Orthodox Christianity and Cyrillic script from Greek Macedonians, and Slavic languages have been spoken in the area alongside Greek in the region ever since. In parts of northern Greece, in the regions of Macedonia Macedonia and Thrace, Thrake Slavic languages continue to be spoken by people with a wide range of self-identifications. The actual linguistic classification of these dialects is unclear, although most linguists will classify them as either Bulgarian or Macedonian Slavic taking into account numerous factors, including the resemblance and mutual intelligibility of each dialect to the standard languages abstand, and the self-identification of the speakers themselves. As however the vast majority of these people have a Greek national identity, linguists will make their decisions based on abstand alone. The Slavic-speaking minority of northern Greece can be divided in two main groups, Orthodox Christians and Muslims, primarily the Pomaks of eastern Macedonia and Thrace. The latter has no reported connection to ethnic Macedonians. The Christian portion of Greece's Slavic-speaking minority are commonly referred to as Slavophones from the Greek Slavophonoi Slavophonoi, lit. Slavic speakers, or Dapi, which means locals. In Greek, from ancient Greek entopios entopios, local. The vast majority of them espouse a Greek national identity and are bilingual in Greek. They live mostly in the periphery of Western Macedonia and belong to the Greek Orthodox Church, which in conjunction with the millet system of the Ottoman Empire which occupied the region until 1913, may explain their self-identification as Greeks. In the 1951 census, 41,017 people claimed to speak the Slavic language. One unofficial estimate for 2000 puts their number at 1.8% of the Greek population, that is c. 200,000. This group has received some attention in recent years due to claims from the Republic of Macedonia that these people form an ethnic Macedonian minority in Greece. Some organizations and academics have stated that there is a minority within the Slavophone community in Greece which self identifies as ethnic Macedonian. There is a dispute over the size of this alleged minority, with some Greeks denying it outright, and some ethnic Macedonians inflating the numbers substantially. The Greek Helsinki Monitor reports that, difficult and therefore risky it is to declare a Macedonian minority identity in such an extremely hostile, if not aggressive, environment in Greece. There are no official statistics to confirm or deny either claims. The Greek government has thus far refused on the basis that there is no significant community and that the idea of minority status is not popular amongst the Greek identifying linguistic community of northern Greece as it would have the effect of them being marginalized, Professor Danforth reports. Finally, the Greek government denies the existence of a Macedonian minority in northern Greece, claiming that there exists only a small group of Slavophone Hellenes or bilingual Greeks, who speak Greek and a local Slavic dialect, but have a Greek national consciousness. A political party promoting this line and claiming rights of what they describe as the Macedonian minority in Greece. The Rainbow, Venosito was founded in September 1998. It received 2,955 votes in the region of Macedonia in the 2004 elections. Topic. Macedonian, language and dialect Topic. Macedonian language modern. The name of the modern Macedonian language, as used by its speakers and defined in the constitution of the Republic of Macedonia is Makedonski Jazik, Macedonian Cyrillic, Makedonski Jazik. The term Macedonian language 
is used by several international bodies, such as the United Nations and the World Health Organization. It is also used by convention in the field of Slavic studies. However, because this language is a South Slavic Indo-European language, and not descended from ancient Macedonian, which was a Hellenic Indo-European language, several other terms remain in use. Some of the names use the family to which the language belongs to disambiguate it from ancient Macedonian, or from the homonymous dialect of modern Greek, sometimes the autonym Makedonski is used in English for the modern Slavic language, with Macedonian being reserved for the ancient language. Affirmation of the classification of Macedonian as a separate language is an important issue for the ethnic Macedonian self view. Critics often treat it as a dialect of Bulgarian, due to their close structural affinity and mutual intelligibility in both written and spoken forms. They also point to Macedonian's recent emergence as a separate standard language, and the political motivation behind its promotion in the mid 20th century. Topic. Macedonian dialect modern, Greek. Macedonian is applied to the present-day Greek dialect spoken by Macedonian Greeks. Topic. Macedonian ancient. The origins of the ancient Macedonian language are currently debated. It is as yet undetermined whether it was a Greek dialect which was part of or closely related to the Doric and or Aeolic dialects, a sibling language of ancient Greek forming a Hellenic i.e. Greco-Macedonian supergroup, or an Indo-European language which was a close cousin to Greek and also related to Thracian and Phrygian languages. The scientific community generally agrees that, although some sources are available e.g. Hesychus lexicon, Pella curse tablet, there is no decisive evidence for supporting any of these hypotheses. The surviving public and private inscriptions found in Macedonia indicate that the written language in ancient Macedonia was ancient Greek. Attic Greek, a form of the Greek language, eventually supplanted the ancient Macedonian entirely in Macedonia from the 5th century BC, and it became extinct during the first few centuries AD. Attic Greek evolved into Koine Greek, then into Byzantine Greek and later into Modern Greek. Topic. Naming policies of foreign countries and organizations Topic. See also Macedonia region. Macedonia terminology. Macedonian question Ireland United Kingdom naming dispute List of homonymous states and regions Topic Notes Topic References, <references>